All right, welcome back everyone to the Lorcana Academy. Into the Inklands is here, and we're going to be playing some Pixelborn today. And in particular, we're going to be playing some decks, or we're going to be playing a deck that did very well at the 8K that happened this past weekend. And when Inklands was spoiled, a lot of people thought that Amber Steel was going to be overpowered and run away with things. And some people thought that Ruby Amethyst Control would remain probably the best deck and stick around. But um, the deck that's performing really well right now seems to be uh, Ruby Sapphire. And in particular, uh, Ruby Sapphire builds built around Tamatoa and Lucky Dime. So that's what this deck is uh, aiming to do. So for those of you who don't know, it's a new card. Uh, Lucky Dime says, uh, choose a character of yours and gain lore equal to their lore. So you stick this, and if your opponent wipes your board or whatever, or if you wipe your own board, then the next turn you get to play a, a character and kind of quest with them right away without needing to expose them to challenges from your opponent, which is pretty sick. Downside is it costs seven, and so in order to mitigate that, we've decided to, or the, the architect of the deck, uh, Go To Mars, I think is his name, uh, decided to ramp heavily into that, and Sapphire's pretty good at that. So in terms of ramp, uh, we have, um, in terms of ramp, we have uh, One Jump Ahead. So that is a song that our two drops can sing, uh, and to, uh, that'll uh, put us ahead by one for the next turn. And on turn two, ramping into turn four it can be kind of important, especially if you've played Popsicle on turn one, because you've drawn your card with Popsicle, you play one jump ahead on turn two, and then on turn three, you get to play Hiram Flavorsham, which is one of the reasons to play an architect deck with these mopey Popsicles in it. Uh, when, you play, when you play him and when you quest with him, you can throw away the Popsicle and draw two, so it turns your Popsicles into draw threes, and if that wasn't enough... If they're in play, they buff Tamatoa, and if they're in your graveyard, when you play Tamatoa, uh, you get to rebuy that Popsicle, play it again. So it's card advantage, and you kind of need that in a ramp deck because you're throwing a lot of your resources away into your inkwell early with cards like Fishbone Quill. And Fishbone Quill has historically just not been great because you put your canned into your inkwell, and then what? Um, if you don't have any cards left in your hand, then all the ink in the world isn't going to save you. So sources of card advantage like Flavorsham and Tamatoa are a pretty big deal. Uh, so are the cards that replace themselves. We have Gramatala. When she comes in, you get to uh, go two cards deep and pick one. Uh, Gaston is excellent questing for three. Combos really well with the, uh, with the Lucky Dime. And also just goes three deep to find you whatever card you need. And then you just have the best cards at controlling the game. Uh, in Ruby, you have Maui to be able to deal with your opponent's locations or their aggressive early starts. Uh, Maleficent, of course, is just a house trading or just eating one of your opponent's characters. It's just an automatic two for one when you get to play her, and you can play her pretty early uh, in a ramp deck. Uh, Scar, as well, is just like kind of a Maui that can go into Pac Man mode. I'm a little worried about him because he's not inkable, and there's already a really high density of uninkable cards in the deck. I guess. Because you can play Fishbone Quill and you can just throw them into your inkwell anyway, it's maybe not such a big deal. Uh, but yeah, that's most of the deck. Uh, the other big addition was this location card. And locations are one of the new mechanics uh, in Into the Inklands. Uh, this is McDuck Manor. Um, it's just a location. Nothing in the deck cares about being at a location. The location has no special text. The only thing that happens is it quests for two, essentially, on your at the beginning of your turn. And so if you get board wiped or if you wipe your own board, then it quests for two, uh, and you get to keep adding more and more uh, lore every turn and forcing your opponent to answer you. And uh, that kind of resilience uh, when you're dealing with Amber Steel decks that can deal with your creatures fairly easily is pretty great. Anyway, uh, that is going to be it for the deck type. We'll get into some games, but before we do, if this deck ends up looking fun to you, then you can head on over to our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com. Use the, code, use the code ACADEMY for 5% off your order at checkout. It lets them know that we sent you, uh, and it helps us bring you more content. Uh, other things that help us, help us bring you more content are just liking and subscribing and leaving comments, letting us know what you want to see next, and generally juicing the YouTube algorithm for us. But anyway, that's enough for me. Let's get into the games. Straight into the mirror match. Pretty popular deck. We get to go first, which is what matters the most. And I think we just want to make sure that we get out to a very fast start. Maui's good because it'll deal with their, uh, it'll deal with their locations. Everything else that's really slow, I think I'm going to get rid of. 
Queen of Hearts, I think I want to be able to sing songs, and the flavor and popsicle combination is pretty good. So I guess it's just these three. Yeah. Popsicle's kind of a mystery box. Like, we'll get something with it. Okay, so the Fishbone Quill is a nice get. Uh... Of all of these plays, I feel like Gramatala's the least important one. Popsicle represents uh, three cards later, so. All right, and we hit a Tamatoa. Honestly, not ideal, but we'll work with it. All right, so opponent uh, inks something. I didn't see. I was adjusting the audio because it's really loud. And please develop your brain, finding a card. So second Fishbone Quill, not quite as good as the first. You run into diminishing returns on that pretty quickly. I think that means I'm fine inking this one. And we'll just deploy the Queen of Hearts. In case we find, like, one jump ahead or something, I'd like to be able to play it for free. Teeth and Ambitions is one that I haven't seen in these lists. And they have their own one jump ahead. Oh, but so do we. Fantastic. Okay. So... Remember, this puts it into into your inkwell exerted, so you don't get to use it the same turn. But that's more than fine. Let's start by singing that with Queen of Hearts. And now we have to choose which of these to ink. I think it's clearly Tamatoa. And then, honestly, probably Fishbone Quill throwing Madame Medusa away. Because we're going to get so many cards off Miss Flavorsham. Or, uh, yeah, Hero and Flavorsham. Sorry. I think I'm in. Just want to make sure that we have the ink that we need to be able to outrace this. Hopefully, Flavorsham helps us find one of our locations because there's not many great ways to interact with that in their deck other than Maui. Popsicle turns into ink, and one Popsicle begets another. We find another one jump ahead, which is fine. We're, we're going to start here, and we're going to pitch the Popsicle, I think. We find Maleficent and Tamatoa are pretty good. So I can one jump ahead. Are, am I willing to throw away any of these? Because, like, I don't know that I want to use the Fishbone Quill to turn anything else into ink, but we got to get up to the 8-drop slot, right? All right. I think I'm going to... Kills me. I think I'm going to ink Maleficent. Um, I'm going to use the Fishbone Quill to put one jump ahead in the ink well, I think. Because it's the same effect, but this lets me quest with Queen of Hearts. So one lore different, and we'll just say go. Opponent has way more cards than we do, but we have so much ink that almost anything off the top is pretty good. This Fishbone Quill has outlived its usefulness now. Like, I don't think we'll be using it anymore after this. Uh, the card disadvantage is, is too much, but this opens us up to a lot of pretty good rips off the top of the deck. Hopefully something like um, McDuck Manor. All right, opponent uh, doing some wheel spinning, sculpting their hand. And I assume it's our go. It sure is. How about another one jump ahead? So we can ink Maui and play Tamatoa. That seems really loose against uh, against a possible location on their side. Yeah, I think I want both of these cards. I'm just going to quest out, and I think I'm going to use the Fishbone Quill to put one jump ahead away. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't sequence that right. I definitely would have pitched the, uh, the Fishbone Quill. Maybe I still should? 
<laughs> ah, you know what? I think I'm in. Makes Tomatoa worse, but two cards is two cards. And what a two cards they are. We get to play the manor, one manor and one jump ahead. Or we can just play the lucky dime. They could be holding their own Maui, so if I play this, it's not as good. But it's still going to get one turn cycle worth of, of value, so let's do it. Yeah. All right. Let's say go. We could move it to... Uh, we'll move any of our characters to McDuck Manor, but there's no good reason. It doesn't actually have any abilities, and none of our characters care. Nick Wild. All right. Rebuying Popsicle. So they have plenty of cards over there, but we are questing for quite a lot. And at this point, if they just leave Flavorsham open, man, am I into just Maui killing it? Because it's so many cards for them. Or do I just sort of say that we've lost our uh, any hope of dealing with their card advantage and we're just trying to win? Oh... Um... Does that change things? Well, what's our line if we play Maui? If we play Maui, it's our whole turn. This Tamato, I don't think, is actually improving. Yeah, we'll just play Maleficent and kill uh, Flavorsham that way. And can't really quest with Queen of Hearts, but... I think this is relatively safe. If they have Maui killing ours, then it's kind of whatever. Because if they if they spend their time killing Flavorsham, then that means they're not spending any time on the location, and that's actually um, the same amount of lore per turn. They ink Montanui. And are we getting home? Um, be prepared. -ed? That would make some sense. Yeah, okay. Maybe shouldn't have played into that so much, but like... Okay. Uh, I mean, we just get to play this, and this is the sick part, right? Like, this dodges be prepared, so we're still gaining two lore a turn. We can play this and play Maui. Which I guess is probably right. It sucks not having anything to do with Maui on the turn he comes down, but... It's too mana inefficient not to play, or too ink inefficient not to play him, I think, so. And, you know, don't look bad, but we're gaining four lore a turn. Okay. All right, so they're going to work on the locations. I mean, let's face up, right? I can just trade Maui with this. Okay. Well, I guess we start with this. I really want to deploy this Lucky Dime, but maybe it's not necessary? Yeah, if we kill Scar, then one of these is very likely to live. Popsicle can't take uh, hit counters off of uh, locations, by the way, unfortunately. But this, I think, is a good trade for us. And... Yeah, I think I just want Kramatala so that I can find something to deploy to the board. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I mean, this works really well with the Lucky Dime, so let's just take that. And... Yeah, nothing else to do with the rest of our ink, so let's... Uh, let's just move Kramatala to one of the McDuck manners. The manners McDuck. And, uh, say go. They don't know that we don't have anything on our deck that deals with locations. Alright, so there's Modern Nui. They're going to be gaining one lore per turn. Here's Scar. And Scar will finish off McDuck Manor. And we draw Maui's Fishhook, which is 
not great. So we're questing for, well, it's unlikely, I think, that this McDuck Manor makes it to next turn. But if it does, then we're questing for three. Exposing Gramatala to Scar is just so bad. All right, let's, I think, start with Gaston. I mean, we could play Lucky Diamond, just gain one lore with Gramatala. But I don't think so. I think this comes down because um, we can activate it using Gaston or on Gaston next turn. Um, man, all of these kind of suck, huh? Do I just want to draw the Inkable? This, I guess, is better if we draw Tamatoa exactly. take the board wipe and I'll play the fish hook and I think just say go and if we untap with Gaston then or if we ready with Gaston then we're in great shape and they don't even know it like, this is lethal if they don't deal with Gaston. Yeah, looks like we got it. I can't think of what they would do if they, if they ink one more thing, and I can't think what they would do for that one ink that disrupts us here. Yeah. Yeah, looks like it's over. So we'll quest with Gaston up to 17 and play the Lucky Dime and activate it targeting Gaston, and that'll take us to 20, and we got there. Cool. So I think we played that all right in the mirror. You saw that the opponent died with a lot of cards in their hand just because we were able to, we were able to ramp into some pretty big things, and our locations were hard to interact with. So I think I'm happy with how that game went. All right, on the play against Emerald Amber. Uh, okay, I think this is too many jumps ahead. I don't think we need to be that many jumps ahead. Wow, this hand is actually really bad. I think we're shipping out these four, and you could convince me maybe to ship out the Queen of Hearts if it weren't possible for us to just brick out on Inkables. Yeah, I think it's these four. on the other one jump ahead. Perfect. I mean, yeah, we did brick, right? Yeah, I, I think that Maleficent is uh, going to get turned into ink at some point. And... Yeah, I mean... Oh, wow. Emerald Amber, I think I'm more likely to want Maui than Maleficent, and it's also more likely that we'll get to play him. But yeah, next turn might just be a turn Queen of Hearts into ink, one jump ahead kind of play. And then hopefully, yeah, I mean, that would ramp us into turn four Flavorsham, but no item in play to, uh, to deal with that. Or to, to synergize with that. So I, I think the play I mentioned last time is just right. It sucks paying full price for one jump ahead, but ramp is ramp. We have no board presence yet, but hopefully the top of the deck will provide that for us. Okay, Gita's pretty good. So this is like an aggressive Emerald Amber deck. Helga Sinclair. When it's challenged and banished, kill what killed her. Okay. Um, I think Maui's very important. Flavorsham doesn't have any items yet. Which I think means it's his time to go. No, I think we just have to pass. Almost any draw in our deck is good. Like, if we don't draw, like, six or seven cost top end exactly. Yeah, 
All right. Helga Sinclair evolves. Quests, you may deal three damage to a damaged character. Okay. I mean, we can just kill her, right? Throwing away Gramatala seems not great, but any inkable off the top unlocks Scar, and if we whiff, we get to play Gaston. So I think we have plays. I think we just keep this quester for three off the board. Mm. Are we going to get our hand discarded? Heart of Atlantis. They're rapping too. Okay. Kind of want to play the Popsicle first because drawing that card will let me know. Well, it'll give me more information when I make my decision about Gaston. But I also don't necessarily want to ink the Popsicle because maybe I draw Flavorsham. I don't want to play it. So I guess let's do this. Uh, we find Tamatoa, which is fine. Nothing else is super exciting. And I guess we'll take him. And we're in the uncomfortable position of having to ink this popsicle if, you know, we want to ever make it to Tamatoa. But, yeah, I, I think we have to. All right, and we're at seven. Uh, the opponent is probably going to go off here in a big way, just throw a bunch of creatures or characters into play now that they have this rat piece. But if they do that, they walk in to be prepared, and if they don't, then we get to play Scar and go nuts. Flynn Rider. 2-3 Evasive. And we have James Tiberius Kirk. So right now, we have four cards in hand, so Flynn quests for zero. I kind of want to give them one more turn to play into a board wipe. The problem is it's just completely face up if we do that. We have two of these, so it's unlikely that they'll be able to take both from our hand if they draw the uh, the duress spell, whatever it's called. Yeah, uh, it, it's completely face up, but also keeping cards in our hand is good to counter their strategy. It gives us more cards to discard if we feel we need to. And I can't play Scar into it. I mean, I guess they can just play Scar, right? And if they make anything vulnerable to him, then he just gets to go Pac-Man mode on them. And if they don't, like if they kill him, then we get to be prepared. Hey. Okay. Yeah, actually, I, th I think I've talked myself into it. We still have to be prepared, so they can't duress both away in an emergency. Flynn's going to quest for one. Maybe two. So, hear me out. We can quest with Gaston and use Scar to sing Be Prepared and then deploy Gaston and just have him alone on an empty board. Because otherwise, like, dealing with Flynn is going to be tricky. I think I'm in. Or do I just quest with Scar? I don't think so. I think we use him to sing, be prepared. Okay. And Gaston the second. I mean, all of these are pretty good. I think Lucky Dime is the best. Because Maleficent, we already have another uh, board wipe for. I still, maybe it's delusional, but I still think Tamatoa uh, might get played. So I'm, I'm reluctant to ink him. Maybe, maybe that's a mistake. Okay. So they're all in. I mean, there's no there's no good reason not to just be prepared here. I think we just have to do that. We're definitely doing that. The question is just, am I going to ink this fishbone quill or not? 
Because it does buff Tamatoa if I get to play it. But I really want to have 9 ink next turn so I can Lucky Dime and use it immediately. But there's nothing to use it on, I guess. Tricky. Alright. I think I will turn it into ink. And next turn at a minimum, we just get we get to play Tamatoa. We're both top decking, but I think our top decks are pretty good. That's a pretty good top deck, though. So that's a hard one to do. Oh, but we we draw a location of our own. Okay. So if we play Tamatoa, next turn we get to Lucky Dime activate, and that'll gain us four as opposed to just playing this, which gains us two. So I think I buy that. Also, this is just board control. Like, if they play another character, then having the 5 agent play is relevant. Do not care much about Simba. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is pretty easy now, I think. Just make sure we play Lucky Dime before we quest with Tamatoa. So that we get the buff. up to 11, and we'll say go. Alright, so there's Milo. It's kind of cute that he's, like, event his evolved form as a king. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think this is just winning, right? I haven't done the math, but So, gaining four next turn, or, yeah, four next turn, plus whatever is from the Lucky Dime. I think Kita is too little too late. Yeah, and this is just, they're dead on board. Cool. Another pretty convincing win, I think. All right, boss fight moment. We are up against Amber Steel. You have to imagine it's Amber Steel songs. So against them, just get everything into the inkwell as fast as we can. So that means there's no time for Lucky Dime, I don't think. Maybe I should be pitching this Be Prepared. Yeah. I think it's just these, honestly. Like, the rest of our hand is pretty good at ramping, and then we just have to believe that we'll draw into some top end. Uh... Tomato is really good given the texture of our hand. All right, I'm gonna. It, it's it's a little weird because Popsicle gets me a random card off the top of my deck, um, whereas Develop Your Brain would have gotten me a uh, a choice of the top two. But I'm aiming to eventually use the item synergies with Tomatoa. Oh, interesting. Okay. Hmm. I think, this, I think this fish hook is just bad. I have never been excited to play it. I guess we start with Popsicle in case we find something we want even less. I don't know, second Maui. Like, even using this for free with a Maui in play, I don't think is super important. Although, I guess it helps us deal with their evasive threats. So I suppose... Alright. I think I've talked myself into inking one of the Maui. I guess they don't really have all that many evasive threats to care about, so maybe that was a reason to ink the fish hook instead, but I think it's a marginal call. In all honesty, both of them are probably going to get turned into ink anyway. All right. Yep, so it is Amber Steel Songs. And what do we do about that? I think we just play the Fishbone Quill and turn something into ink, and honestly, it's probably the one jump ahead. We're not going to be singing it anytime soon. Okay. It is an item for Tamatoa, but it's, like, not doing anything. Like, at least these popsicles, they eventually, or they got some value. And we will put... What's next turn? We're going to have four ink ramping up to six. I don't think that's super relevant. Yeah. I think I'd rather just play Gramatala next turn. Or, you know, Maui, if they 
do something with Cinderella. And again, we have to expect that whole new world is coming soon-ish. Probably not here. Like, they probably don't want to pitch five cards to draw seven, because we actually benefit from that more. Okay, so they found the, uh, the duress, though. So they get to look at my hand and discard a non-creature. There's only one choice. They have to take Be Prepared. And... Hey. So we can Maui kill Cinderella. Guess not just so good, but, like... Are we gonna get to... Uh, are we gonna get to play him? Is, like, is he better than Tamatoa? Yeah. Hate it. Yeah, all right. I don't think I can... I don't think I can let them keep multiple singers around and wield their hand. Uh, do I use the fishbone quill? If I believe Whole New World is coming, then I should. But I kind of want to force them to have to actually do it. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to say go. Okay. They get to kill Maui, which is sad. And now what do they do? Maybe the right line last turn was to play Gramatala and look for another bee prepared. No legal hits there. So they just threw a card away for nothing. We drew another Tamatoa, which is relevant to my interests. Also just play Gaston. And I think both of these replace themselves, right? Yeah. So given the choice, let's just get Gaston play because we have no use for the other, uh, uh, for the other two ink anyway. We find McDuck Manor, one jump ahead in Gramatala. Yeah, I'm in for McDuck Banner. McDuck Manor. And do I just throw it straight into the inkwell in the hopes of being able to play Tomatoa next turn? Maybe. Maybe. It's so hard for them to deal with this, though. We have no source of card advantage coming other than... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are we getting whole new worlded? Please don't. I mean, actually go for it if you want. Like, it's a draw six for me, so I'm more than happy with that. I have more ink. Okay, they find shock, basically, two damage. And they use Ariel to sing it, which is a pretty big concession. Gross. That's disgusting. So if I quest with Gaston, then it opens him up to be chewed up by one of these, but they could just have another two damage shock. You also just trade with Ariel. That's not super exciting. I can also throw away a popsicle. Yeah, you know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay, oh, I, thought, I thought I misclipped or something. And do I just eat Ariel? Yeah, it can't be too wrong. And if they don't, uh, if they don't wheel our hand, then Tamato is coming down next turn. And if they do wheel our hand, then we're pretty happy anyway. Yep. Still. That's like I think the third discard spell, and two of them have missed. Jeez. And they can't, they don't even quest with Ariel because they don't want to expose her to Gaston. Well, if you won't, then I will. Yeah. Let's get that popsicle back. 
Yeah, and they just scoop it up. Cool. Yeah, it was weird. Like, I, I was expecting the wheel to come. I was expecting the wheel to come. I was expecting it to come, and it never did. But, like, at any point, if they played it, then it was probably going to be better for us than for them anyway. And we didn't even have a location in play. We just sort of kept their board under control and put out better quality threats than they were able to. Okay. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, hit like. If you really liked it, hit subscribe. Make sure to go to coolstuffinc.com for all of your Lorcana card and card protection needs. Uh, use code ACADEMY for 5% off your order at checkout. Uh, it lets them know that we sent you. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.